Connected Classrooms Discover Career Series. Do continue this discussion of discovering careers by creating and sharing your photos, videos, stories, and even your own interviews on your social media channels using hashtag FrogCC or hashtag FrogGD. To our live viewers, you may submit to us your questions using the question and answer app the left of your screen, and we, will sh we shall try to answer your question when time permits. Today with us, we have Jaleen Ko, a games designer. Jaleen, would you like to introduce yourself and what you do? Hi, um, my name is Jaleen. Um, I work as a game designer, and uh, so I work with BoomZap. BoomZap is like an international company um, based in, uh, it's registered in Singapore, but we work online. So all of the employees of BoomZap are scattered um, in this time zone, like Philippines, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Russia, and stuff like that. Yep. So um, how many years have you been working in this field? Um, I've been working in this field for probably about, say, three years, I think. About three years. Okay. I started as a I started as a a, a music um, I was doing music for them I was doing background music for the company and then after that I got into uh, in the game myself. Mm. Okay. Uh, can you tell me Can you tell us more about what your typical workday is like? Um, you know what day is I wake up like maybe around ten o'clock and then. And then I get off whenever I want. So because we are all online, uh, so there is no real sort of like you have to punch card and get in. It's just you have to get online so that people can communicate with you. Like so, my team members can communicate with me, but I don't have to be really working as long as I'm able to finish my task at the end of the day, mm. and then it's okay. So it's always about it's task basis and it's trusting you. It's trusting everyone in the company as an adult to finish their side of the, the deal, you know? Like, because we're all working on one project, so everybody has to give their own. You okay. have to sort of be disciplined to finish it yourself. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Sorry, I heard you. Yeah. Like, I can hear you. Uh, what do you usually do every day as a games designer? Oh. Um, so like I said, I probably get up around 10 o'clock and I will log in into our, our uh, chat. So our company chat is like where we discuss things and then there's also like other, other softwares or online applications to help with production. Um, and then I will update to our latest build folder I'll copy over our build folder, which is like this is the latest game so far, so that I can check what else is left. I think, and then uh, depending on what we are doing right now, I could be scripting, like I could prepare the room. Okay, let's say I want this room to be, it should look like a bedroom, and then you should be able to click on will be the 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 cupboard, and then the door, and also the bed. So these are three things that of Okay, so I'll mark it out that these are the things and then what happens to them when you click and so I can script that out. Or if like right now if my project is into like the final stages where I bring out the bug, then I will look into the bug our bug system, like when the QA is logging in and then I'll start clearing the bugs. Like maybe when you click on this things doesn't happen. I will check out it and then I'll fix it there. Depends on what stage am I in during the production. Um, okay, so how many average? How many projects do you usually work on as a game designer every day, or is it just you um, focus on just one? Usually, we just focus on one project on one project. Uh, like one project would have about one or two designers maximum, um, and the yep. designers will work on that project only. It's like it's like your baby, and then you kind of need to see it from start to finish like like in the early production time you have to actually 
how the game is going to go and how it's going to flow, right? So that's the game game document, the game design document. And then during the during the production, you need to script out how everything's going to look so that artists can come in and just make things pretty. And then towards the end, you have to fix yeah. the bugs and all that. So it's quite a full-time job and there's a lot of things to do. So a designer cannot have time to manage at the same time. So mostly in our company, our way is just the designer work on their project and they own the project. Okay. And I think mm, okay. like you own up to it, you know? Yeah. So you just you know, it's your baby la, I guess. You just focus yeah. on it until it finishes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh so um you know, if when you do something project for a long time, I'm very sure you eventually get to know like the challenges uh, that you know will come up during the project. So what are the top three challenges that you may have faced during this uh, time as a games designer? Okay. Well as a game designer, um, one of the challenges because of my company is like an online company, so one of the challenges would be actually seeing people or you know, knowing your knowing the people that you work with, because we are so online. I only meet my colleagues probably once a year if they have like a whole company trip thing, you know. So yeah, I'm not very close with my team, but we trust each other. So it's all based on trust, and sometimes it's hard for me to teach whether or not this person will be working. And when I need things urgently, I can't scream at them. You know, it's that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Other challenges would be self-discipline. When, you know, um, because you're sitting at home, sometimes your mother or your spouse would expect you, hey, you can do this, 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 but, you know, you, it's, it's a bit hard to tell them, no, ma, I have to work. I'm sitting at home, but I'm, like, I'm actually working. So, to be, being able to discipline yourself to finish a task at hand, Without being pushed mm -hmm. by 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 managers or something like that is sometimes a bit of a challenge. Mm. And yeah, that's probably it. I think there's not much challenge to it. Okay, cool. Um, just for the benefit of our audience, uh, I'll just probably just um summarize what we have discussed so far in Malay. Uh, Inconi adalah a uh, games designer. Uh, dan dia Tidak ada apa kedai fizikal kerja-kerja uh, dia semua dibuat online dengan kumpulan dia. Kumpulan dia juga online di negara-negara lain dan kerja-kerja um, yang uh, dilakukan tu semua kerja semua projek yang dilakukannya uh, dilakukan oleh individu-individu-individu uh, di negara lain dan dia berkolaborasi uh, online. Jadi uh, tak ada kedai fizikal. So um, We'll just continue on with the questions. So, um, what was your academic pathway that led you to what you do now? Um, no, actually, music is really weird. I I have a degree in music management, um, mm -hmm. and and really it has not much link to it. I have, other than so, how I got into it was when I was in <clears throat> when I was doing in. I was working with Game Brains, also a local game uh, game company. And at that time, Game Brains had an internal music uh, department, like a sound department. So I interned for it. And then subsequently, when the the sound guy at Game Brains moved over to Boomzap, he um, he kind of asked me if I want to. So I joined. I joined in um, yeah. as as to do music for Boomzap. And then that's how I got into the company and the, into the industry. But you should, games, uh, if you are, if you want to get into games, music is not the traditional way to get into it. Okay, yeah. So um, that's interesting, I guess. Uh, uh, Adinjali ni ada degree dalam music, tetapi uh, dia ada peluang lah dengan degree ni untuk memasuki uh, bidang games design ni. Jadi, um, I guess what what is the what uh, is the normal academic pathway uh, that a person will usually take to get into games design? Um, 
so games design because design encompasses a lot of other things um, I guess standard <coughs> would be to just get a computer science degree mm -hmm. so that you understand the logic and you understand how computers work but um, if it's not a computer science degree any degrees like you know digital painting or, or multimedia art that kind of art degrees are okay as well okay. because then you get to you understand how to sort of have the concept art for it you know okay so I'm guessing the skills that you need are probably problem solving, probably creative thinking. Are there any? Is it? Are there any? Um, other? Okay. <clears throat> looking at looking at my the group of other designers that worked with me, one was a writer, one was an artist, one studied game design, and one had uh, computer science. So I'm like the only one that came in. We have music background. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Um, can your skills be translated to other industry? So what you're doing right now, what you have learned so far, you know, can it transfer to the other industries? And if yes, what other industries can you actually go into as a games designer? Okay. Um as designer dance, um mostly usually you will have to deal with writing. So you have to write out the story, you have to write out the dialogue. So there's a lot of writing in this, there's a lot of proposal writing in this. So you become very good at, you know, putting out concept of stories, um, writing. You'll be good at writing, definitely. Um, <clears throat> and if you, while you're doing designing, if you have dabbled in a lot of designs, like the art part of it, then of course definitely you could do, you like a concept artist as well. But of course, this is based on your stuff. You have to kind of work. You have to practice as well. Uh. Depends on when, how much you want to contribute to your work, right? Mm -hmm. um, also, also, depending on your involvement in the code, in coding, you could also script. OK. Uh, do you code a lot? Um, I have to touch left and right a bit, but I'm not super good at it. So I still have like a programmer to do the really hardcore stuff like and and coding how to port things to different different platforms. But I do like the high end scripting. Mm, okay. Yeah. So I mean, uh, so I guess uh, if you learn how to code, jika anda belajar untuk uh, code, uh, it will be an extra benefit lah. Yes, definitely. Because then you know how it works. Okay. That's, uh, that's interesting. Uh, I guess um, next question would be, how far can you go up to this in this field? Like, you know, in terms of uh, promotions, berapa jauhkah anda boleh pergi dalam bidang ini? Pergi. The thing you have to understand is, games is is not a corporate company. We are not like a publisher with corporate hierarchy. So, um, we, in a game company, the most that you ever go is what creative design, creative director or technical director. You know, um, you just imagine yourself in in, um, in an advertising company. When you're in an advertising company, there is no there is no further away. It's everybody has to contribute. You are you are unique in the team, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we we work together and we create things and then your value comes from how good you are at things. It's not about hierarchy. It's not about, oh, your manager means you do better. You're just having a role in there. Like we have a producer whose role is just to deal with the publishers. But, you know, they themselves don't create the game. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, um, <laughs> There is a question from our Q and A uh, app. Do you have to be a good game player to be a good game designer? Adakah anda harus uh, pandai bermain game untuk menjadi game designer? Okay, interesting question. Uh, answer is no. Um, playing games help with being a game designer. I play games every day. I have to play games every day. But yeah. Um, the difference is when, as a game designer, when I'm playing the game, I am analyzing the game. I'm not just playing it for fun. I'm analyzing why does this fun? 
why am I enjoying playing the game? Like, what does what do they do? How do they pace it out that so that I'm enjoying it? So sometimes it takes out the fun out of the game. Feel like you're winning every time you're playing a game. Okay. Uh, so I guess why you're playing is masa under mind. Yeah, so problem solving lah. So you're trying to figure out what works. It's a lot of analyzing as well. Analyzing. Banyak analisa, proses analisa tu uh, ada banyak lah, banyak proses analisa semasa bermain game untuk menjadi game designer. So, um, next question is, I'm sure the students uh, think stable, adakah pendapatan anda uh, stabil? Um, depending on which company you work at, <coughs> Currently, the currently the game is the, the game industry is a bit shaky. So the big companies, if you're working for a triple A company like Ubisoft, uh, Bioware, or EA, or that kind of big companies, right? Then it's a bit more stable because they have already established themselves in the industry. They're having uh, investors and stuff like that. But if you're working for a small startups or small studios that is working with like one or two games, then it becomes a bit shaky. Um, there is always a turn of um, how do I say studios close down and then and then people the developers have to move to another studio or start up their own studio. So if you are starting out and trying to break into the industry as a small studio, that it gets a bit shaky. Mm, okay. Yeah. So yes, yeah, that does uh, answer a question from Aziza from SK Petra Jaya. What is the career potential of games? designer in Malaysia. So I guess it really depends on where you work and who you work for sometimes, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so there is another question from Muhammad Zu from SK Petra Jaya. Um, yeah, what tools or software do you use to design a game? So you want to introduce maybe uh, some two or three softwares that you usually use? Okay, um, we, because our company uses our own game engine, but our engine is to the public. So, um, in terms of tools, that's the whole engine is there. Um, my our coders design the engine ourselves, right? Um, other tools would be Photoshop, yep. paired with scripting because we need the Photoshop to create all these characters, the concept art, or the room and the art, and then we we use scripts to access it as, as game assets, and then then through the engine we put the assets together as the game. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for answering that. There is another very interesting question from SMKA Baling, and I think this is uh, very personal. What are the examples of games that you have created that are on the market? Um, one of the games that I've done is Amber Wing. Amber Wing Lost Legacy. Let me let me type it out. Amber Wing Lost. Legacy. Um, this is um, being published under Big Fish Games. is on the bigfishgames.com um, website. Uh, this was one of the games that I, I worked on when I just entered game design. Okay. Um, so, and now I'm working on another project called Na Nightstone Murder in Romania. So this, uh, it's coming out end of this month. Mm. Um, it's based on a murder and then a uh, a, a novelist is trying to the murder happen in this castle. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so these are the games that I worked on. But the com the studio kind of produces several games at one time. Okay. Team. So I guess like a lot, uh, a lot of these games, yeah, like you mentioned, uh, there are there's a lot of creativity in writing. Uh, so, so uh, kepada pelajar pelajar yang suka menulis uh, novel ke menulis cerita ke. Game design juga adalah satu bidang yang boleh dicuburi, yang anda boleh uh, cuburi juga. So, uh, moving on, there is a question that I think you get asked a lot as a game designer. Um, you know, there are some projects that you might do that have non-children content, so it might be violent, it might you know have guns or anything. So, um, what do you think about this uh, kind of uh, content and how, how do you avoid involving yourself in this kind of uh, projects, you know, it's, it's an ethics question, I guess. Um, it, it's true, it's an ethics question and, and 
Generally, we it depends on what kind of target audience we are going for. Uh, because our company does casual games, Boomset does casual games, so we target people who are not very hardcore gamers. Mm -hmm. And so our content are usually very family friendly. It's usually very easy. It's not very hard. The learning curve is easy. And so those are the kind of things that we take into account. And we just try to avoid things that might provoke. Uh, emotions through violence because the whole thing about violence in games right, so that they can provoke emotions you know like uh, just so that you feel like really heartbroken about the character mm. so well we don't we try to use other methods to to fish out emotions instead instead of using violence and blood gore and stuff like that okay yeah okay there is a question from uh, Muhammad Izarwan from SMK Pondok Upe uh, does an animator work a, play a big part in games designing? And how big a part does he yeah. play? Um, animators don't play a big part in game designing, but it plays a big part in game development because nowadays all, all games need animation and it's been to a point where it's been to a point where we need, we are hiring a lot of animators because everyone wants to be very heavily animated. So, uh, if you being an animator, you definitely get into the game industry as a game developer, but probably not as a game designer. Okay, can you yeah. uh, explain uh, what's the difference between game designing uh, and game developing? Well, game design. And you design like what I do. I design and I kind of, I kind of see how the whole, the whole game gonna look like. You know, I decide how's the game, the writing is like. I put everything together. Mm -hmm. um, whereas for a game developer, you could be like an artist or that makes asset, or you could be um, uh, the animators who animate assets together to make it look nice, or you could be a programmer who works on the back end system that we work on. Okay. You know. So everyone in the game company is a game developer, mm. um, uh, but then then there's specific roles within the game developer team. Yeah. Okay. So I'm also guessing that game yeah. games development goes on, uh, and games designing is a uh, part of the process, I guess. Yes. 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 It's just part of the process. Okay. So, thank you. Um, there is a question from. Uh, SK Petra Jaya and I have also wondered this when I was young. Uh, do you need a game tester to evaluate and test your game before you market it? And actually, can students be a game tester as well? Yeah. Um, yes, we, we need game testing. We have a lot of... Um, actually, we are coming up with a new game that has soft launch. It's called Pillage People. I'm not sure if I can write it here. Pillage. Um, it's been soft launched in Google Store right now. You can actually download it. Um, there's also beta testing for it. Um, previously, we've actually sent out invites for people to join in beta testing to kind of test out the game, see if you like it, what what did you not like about it, so that we can make adjustments in the in the game. And then, uh, you know, bugs. If, let's say, well, how do you, if you were able to break it and stuff like that. So we have internal QA to just go through, and then we have like a outside feedback where we ask people to join for beta testing. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, cool. That's good to know because I've always wondered as a student if I can actually take a part time job. Yeah, of course. You could join. Yeah, because you do two things that you love and you get money. But yeah, uh, okay, uh, I'm moving on to SMK Teluk Kerang, a question from Anis Atika. Can you share with us your best achievement that you have gained so far? Um, so what's your <laughs> best moment? My best moment is to ship my first game. Like, you know, it's, it's a hard work. It's because our development cycle is about six months to a year. So yep. that's... I worked for eight months, roughly, and oh my god, it was it was really a lot of work um, and a lot of emotional investment into it. Like during time when when everybody's rushing to get things to get out, you know, like 
clearing other bugs and getting everything together last minute. Mm -hmm. uh, the crunch, crunch time, like, crunch time can go up can go to about two months to three months when you know you cannot make deadline and then you just have to stay late hours to finish it. So, you know, at the end of the day when we the game, it was like, ah, oh, gosh, it's out. And it's the first game, it's like my first, um, you know, actually published game for public. And then, so it felt really good to me. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's one really interesting question. Um, what are the subjects that a student might have to, I guess, uh, do well in to become a games designer? Or is it uh, necessary at all? And I guess uh, in the same process, um, what stream do you have to be, you know? Um, <clears throat> games, um, so games designer, right? You don't have a specific stream. Um, best portfolio for a game designer is to have designed a game on paper. Mm. If let's say you have had times when you have designed a paper, bought games or whatever, it's about designing games and have the passion to design games and making games for people to play. It's not just about playing games, you know. Um, so, so any stream can work. Uh, the best would be, the best, most concrete one would be uh, computer science. So computer science will give you a good look on how the computer works and how do you script and it, it gives you a very solid background for games design. But you could work on anything. You could be an artist and still be a game designer. You could be a musician and still be a game designer. Um, it's more on, on the passion to create games. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, thanks for the answer. Um, there is a question from Muhammad. Uh, there's a question from Ikra Takwa from SMK Teluk Kerang. Uh, very interesting question. How can your game influence other people's lives? Do they bring benefits to others? I guess. So yeah, uh, there are some games that I guess have more educational qualities than other games. Yeah. So. What do you, what's your opinion on that? Um, the games that we create are um, somewhat, it, they are, they, we call them HOPAS, which is Hidden Object uh, Puzzle Adventure Games. Mm -hmm. And our main target audience are middle-aged women around the world, mostly in US, middle-aged women. So for them, this is more like an interactive story, a very casual interactive puzzle adventure. And um, imagine how a book, sometimes when you read a really, really good book and then you just want to keep on reading and reading and reading. So we make games like this, we make games that make you just want to keep going on and, and find out hey, what happened next to the character. It's like a novel, storyline kind of thing. And a lot of the, a lot of the grandmothers that play our games sometimes write back to us and tell us, you know, oh my god, uh, I don't know how long that I have left to live. I want to know what happened to um, Sophia. Sophia is one of the characters in our, our hit game, uh, Awakening. Okay. So, so they, the players that play our game, right? The players that play our game feel very connected to the characters in the game. And, and to them, it's a very, it's a relief. It's a, like, it gives to just, unwind and just delve into this kind of fantasy world where they just can, you know, let go, become the heroine. And so it, it, it changes life for them. Okay, that's interesting. That's actually very interesting. So I guess your impact goes beyond just, you know, <laughs> uh, finding the game. It goes towards all the way, like, you can see people's lives as well, and they write back and all that. Yeah, that's actually yeah. interesting. Mm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll just move on. There is a question from SK Petra Jaya from Muhammad Zul Haris. Um, he's asking if you can use uh, CMD, the command tool, to design a game. So I guess um, what um, this is a more coding question. I guess. No, what do you use to design your games and all that? Um, you. Mm, do you want to do this? Sorry, I just give me a moment. Yeah, okay. go on. Okay, 
So you can technically you can use um, command prompt to design a game because it works. It's a script, right? But it will probably be more text-based game. So uh, before the whole um, art and stuff that you know today with all the visuals, games used to be text where you describe things to you. Like you come to a room and then you see a chest, what you do, and then you select yes or no or something like that. So, um, so you technically could use command prompt, and the whole game would be very different from what you would expect a game would look like today. Okay. Uh, just hold on a moment. Uh. SMK Tampin, uh, if you have just joined us, please. Uh, SMK Tampin, jika anda baru setai kita, sila jangan gunakan capture tool kerana ia akan mengganggu audio untuk sesi ini. Anda boleh mengambil gambar uh, kemudian. Okay. So anyway, with that aside, um, moving on, um, can you give a potential word of advice to all games designers or students that are thinking of becoming a game designer out there? Um, if I would say uh, advice, if you really want to get into game design, start designing. Um, design games can be <clears throat> like what I would do when I was really young is I would take out you know, those grid papers with a small eyes where we used to do, do um, mathematics, you know, that, those grid papers. And we would use the grid and do like um, war games. We were like, okay, this is my, my army is here and then my army is... We were, like, um, our method was actually using pencil, pencil points where we, we press on it and then okay. we hit. So that was the game mechanic. So, so and we're talking about designing games as in, you know, you could, you could change, maybe use a, card, a deck of cards, you know, a deck of cards and then figure out how a new game for it. So start designing games, start making your, your brains work as how do you make games interesting? How can you rework a game into something interesting? Or you could write, start writing, you know, start creating stories then subsequently maybe next time you could put into a game, you know. Hmm. Okay, cool. There is this one very interesting question from Farahin from SMK Sultan Badisha. Uh, what are the percentages of females involving themselves in this field? So, uh, adakah perempuan juga boleh mencemburi bidang ini? So, I guess it's, this is a very uh, stigma question uh, that oh. you want to do. <laughs> yeah. oh. it's, it's rather peculiar that my company Boomzap has about 49% female. Oh, okay. So, but I I hold that our company is very rare, that there are usually not as many females in the field. But I think nowadays it's getting better, and uh, it's not that hard to be a female to join as a game developer. It's not really a problem. Mm. So, I guess, um, yeah, uh, there is, Another question from, uh, yeah, there is another question for the uh, guest asked just now from SK Petrajaya from Iyad. Uh, do you design games for Xbox 360 or PS3 as well? So yeah, this is a very platform driven. <laughs> so, yeah, do you want to speak about that? Um, no, because we are a casual game and PSG and Xbox 360 usually deal with uh, more graphic heavy AAA titles. So, um, as a we kind of don't see the don't see that direction as as something we want to do. So we do not do it. Uh, we used to be we used to do game for <coughs> Xbox Kinect, I think. Okay. Xbox Kinect. We had a game for Xbox Kinect called Pirates Blunder, uh, where you kind of wave around and you you are the pirate, kind of around and kill with the mm. loots and stuff like that. Um, that was the only um, console games that we made. The rest are right now we're working on mobile games and PC games, Mac and PC games. Okay. Um... There is a question for Mubarak from SK Temelo Jaya. Uh, I'm not sure if you have really mentioned this, but what genre of games do you usually, does your company usually design? You know, I know it's mobile games, but uh, there are a variety of games that you mentioned that were click and 
explore kind of games and there were also you know tapy games and all that. So can you elaborate more on that? Um so our company creates casual games. Casual games meaning um you can pick it up and play it right away and then you can put it down and back later on. It's not something that is very immersive that you require several hours to get to a certain level. Um, even if we have like an RPG system in it, we have a leveling system in it, still it will be focused on making it very easy for anybody to just pick it up and play. So that's casual games. We focus on learning curve, we focus on just fun right away, just, you know. Okay. Uh, I think we have a live question from uh, SMK July. If any schools want to ask a question live, please uh, state your question on the group chat box and say that you want to go live. Jika lau ada sekolah yang ingin menyanyikan soalan dengan... Sorry, I'll rephrase that. Jika ada sekolah-sekolah yang ingin menyanyikan tetamu kita soalan live, uh, sila type di group chat box dan katakan anda ingin pergi live. So, um, moving on to the next question, Siti from SMK Temelo Jaya. Oh, okay. Uh, how much time do you usually take to design one game? What is the average, you know, time that you take? Um, so different different games have different development cycle. For our games, is about roughly six months development cycle. So six months uh, from designing the game, designing the whole outline of the game, like everything that has to do with it. That will, that will probably take like a month to two months, and then the rest of the months putting scripting everything in and putting the art assets in and animating it and finally shipping it. Yeah. Um, so. But um, if you want to do like triple A type, you know the big game that you play, like I don't know GTA or Dark Souls two, um, those kind of games would have a development cycle of probably two years, two okay. years depending on the team. And those teams are like hundreds, three hundred people for per team. Our team is about ten. Mm. Ten, huh? So it takes a quite a while as well. Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, there is a live question from SMK Teluk Kerang. So, uh, SMK Teluk Kerang, uh, sila tampil ke hadapan. Please come in front of the mic, unmute it and ask your question. SMK Teluk Kerang. Hello? Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi. Okay, say hi. Uh, we're from SMC Lockdown. Uh, we enjoy listening to you. Thanks. That's all, Anta. Is there a question? Uh, okay, we, we have a question to ask you. What did you do to ensure that the gamers will like or be be interested to your game. So what do you usually do to ensure that the gamers are interested in your game? Uh, that's when beta testing comes in. So okay. um, we, the thing with our games, like when I said we are a casual gaming uh, company, is sometimes when I play games, I very story heavy games. like. I, I like RPG games with very rich storylines, right? And sometimes my understanding of the story can be too deep. And then so anytime when we design, we share it around, um, like we'll let other QA, our QA to test it, we ask other designers to test it, we ask um, testers to test it, so that we know um, what are their reactions like, and then what would they think would be more um, more relatable and then I come back and then I rework it to fits, you know, so it's a lot of trial and error It's like training yourself to be a storyteller. How do you best? Tell your story in the most effective way and to be able to let other people um, Emotionally attached to it while not hard like you cannot understand it Okay, so, so then you have to just find a balance 
Yeah, so that's what beta testing is, lah. Yes. Uh, is SK Petra Jaya, you are live on the mic now. Would you like to ask your question? Okay. My name is... Hi. My name is Sarah Chira from SK Petra Jaya. How much time do you need to design a new game? Okay, yeah, they just asked uh, how much time do you take to design a game? It's a full-time job. <laughs> um, so I, I work almost every day from uh, 10 to 10 to 5-ish like that. And, and depending on, on how. So as a designer, I say before, as a game designer, you have different... Um, different phases of development cycle. Like when you're starting out, you're just like designing the game as on paper, how it would look like, what is the common concept, um, doing the concept art, um, what, how you want the story arc to do like, feel like. And then there's a development cycle where you think together so that it looks right. And then there's the final phase where you just clear out the bugs and make sure there is no way that someone can break the game. And then so based on in the game phase, development phase, you are then, then you do what you do, and then it's a full time job. It's a lot of work. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks for the question. I hope that answers it. Um, next one is SMK July. SMK July, uh, your turn to ask a question. Can you approach the mic and unmute it and ask? Thank you. Hi, SMK July. Uh, okay, I think they have issues with the. Yeah. Um, there was actually a question from uh, Petra Jaya just now from No Aliyah. Where can you go to study in Malaysia to become a games designer? So what universities, what academies do you can you go to to pursue this course? Um, I think there are several. There is a game design course in, um, in Utah, University of Kodaraman, and there is a games design course in KDU as well. Uh, I think I have these two. Um, but if you do not take games design, then there is computer science subjects in, you know, almost every university there is. So computer science is a, also a stable subject you can take. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, we have really reached uh, yeah, the end of our session. Uh, so any last advices, advice that you can give to students that may want to pursue games design in the future? Um, I think if one is pursuing design, start designing now so that and then start analyzing the games that you play. You know, just basically start producing things, start creating things, and then um, once you create, then you really, you really understand the whole process of creating things. And then when you come into, when you get into the industry of game designing, you have something to show. You're not coming in just like blank and uh, you know, I don't know anything, please teach me. But you have something to show. Now, I tried to create this, but I didn't know how to create it better. Then, you know, people say, oh, if you have tried, and I will definitely will help you make this even better. Okay. Uh, while you're giving, yeah. question, can you give advice to the students probably uh, on how they can balance uh, work life, work and life in the future as a games designer? Work and life. And office and all. <laughs> Uh, I'm I, like my office, we have this tagline, pants optional, like we don't even wear pants because we just get up from, get up from bed and then just go on the computer and start working and in our office. Um, yeah. There is, I guess when you work from home, it's, it's up to your own discipline to balance uh, how much play and how much work time. Mm. Um, 
I really can't give any advice other than self-discipline. You just have to find a way to get work done. And once you have your work done, you go play. But yeah, you just have to discipline yourself. I have no tips for that. You just have to make yourself do it. Okay, so yeah, a lot of just uh, keeping yourself focused, I guess. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's good advice. Um, yeah. <laughs> This announcement to the schools right now, do continue this discussion of discovering careers by creating and sharing your photos, which you can take right now, videos, stories, and even your own interviews on your social media channels using hashtag ProcCC or hashtag ProcGD. Uh, to our live viewers, you may also submit your feedback and your um, suggestions through the bit.ly link that we will send, we will post onto the group chat later on. So uh, we have really reached the end of our live session. I hope you really, I hope the schools have uh, gotten really good insights into a life of a games designer and we will see you tomorrow for a session with the pilot. So everyone say bye to Jaleen. Wave. Bye. <laughs>